Hello, everyone. I believe everything is working. Drew, can you want to you say something? <laughs> yeah, I can see myself. Let's see here. I wonder what the delay is. It's it's pretty significant. Um, yeah. <laughs> so, uh, well, oh, oh, that's like 15 or 20 seconds. Wow. Yeah, it's a I, I think I can shorten it, but I, I like having the long delay uh, makes setting up things better. Um, so uh, as far as I know, everything is going well on the on the end user side. I can't hear you because if I do, then I'll overlay Drew. And you'll have two, uh, four of us talking. Um, you would have four of us. What do you mean four? We would have four of us. What do you mean four? You yeah, would have exactly. four of us. Exactly. We don't want, I mean, we already have enough issues on as far as audio goes with this uh, stream. We don't want to create more. Um, so uh, welcome everyone to the uh, second episode of GeekCast Future Now. Uh, today I'm joined by Drew on this, uh, This, to, according to me, it's this side. Um he is an MSP based out of Florida, correct? Yes, that is correct. Florida man through and through. Yeah. Well, I, I wouldn't necessarily claim that. Um, so, uh, Drew, do you want to give everyone uh, a quick rundown of your you and your business? Not really. Okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, Drew Hack with Players Technology. Um, I'm kind of that, you know, proverbial everyone hates one man band, but you know, um, it is what it is. I'm getting there, looking for growth. Um, definitely very ingrained in um, a few of the MSP communities. So um, just that's me. That's fantastic. I mean, the uh, one of the reasons why I wanted you on is because you're going to have a different perspective um, than someone who isn't a, a smaller shop or a one-man band as you put it so eloquently um there's a whole lot of small and one-man band shops around and while they don't always have the greatest of reputations everyone starts somewhere you can't start with a five-man team and you don't always get to start with a five-man team and, and build up from there um so uh i think that you're gonna be able to help offer uh the community and you know the insights from your perspective uh as someone who may actually depending on your perspective be set up better for the future than some of the bigger businesses are i think anyway um, yeah because being being smaller you have a lot of opportunity to flex and migrate and do things right whereas when you have a larger team there's a lot of training that would come with everything or making a change or doing um, doing things differently, just either because of culture or training or what everybody is just used to doing and what they're good at. Um, so I, pros and cons. Oh, yeah. I mean, 100%. Um, so without further ado, let's, let's get into our first topic. Um, thank you, Tyler, for that sub subscription. By the way, uh, slight... Uh, Let's just go ahead and plug stuff. Uh, today, the Twitch has September 20% off subscriptions if you want to subscribe. Uh, if you have Amazon Prime, you can sub for free. Uh, just got to have your account joined and you can just hit the sub button. Um, we have a merch shop. There's a link somewhere. I don't even remember where it is, but it's there. Someone will post it sometime. Um, if you're on YouTube, subscribe. If you see this later, um, like join the you can join channels now and give money all kinds of fancy stuff um but now that's now the plugging is all out of the way um let's get into our first topic which is Ooh. something that is going to be uh really important in the future which is regulation in the msp space um uh, Louisiana always has already put in some regulation, which is surprising considering it's Louisiana. No offense to Louisianians. Um, but they put in legislation that requires MSPs to register as if one of their clients were ransomware. And that's pub in, in, in the outcome of that. Uh, so if you paid or if it was, if you didn't pay and stuff like that. Uh, and basically is put your information public. So it's, uh, it's very surprising. Um, only if it's state or local government, according to uh, ZAF, um, which is interesting. I thought it was regardless if it's a uh, if you were 
in the state but that's it it even if it is only state and local governments then uh you are it, it's the first step in a long line of soon to be legislation um so as a one man band as uh you said earlier how do you think regulation is going to impact our industry regulation in our industry is going to come in two forms two really well a lot of different forms but but i think we're going to see two things first and and that's either going to be regulation of our customers which means which will also be us because it's going to be blanket regulation in terms of security measures security postures for technology across all businesses um, that are responsible to be reported to by the state or it's going to be regulation on us that certain standards that we're going to have to maintain. And to do that, we're going to have to force it down to our customers. Um, blanket regulation, if and when it happens, would probably be the easier piece to carry for IT providers for us, because that means everyone has to do it. Um, if it's simply directed at IT companies, MSPs, TSPs, MSSPs, whatever acronym we're using today, um, you're going to run into a lot of situations of looking like the boogeyman to your customers suddenly because you're having to meet standards of X, Y, Z, then you're having to pass those costs on to your customers. And it's just, it's gonna look bad for us. Yeah, we're already facing um, that with security and that's easily transferable with regulation like that. Ab absolutely. And it's it's either gonna be driven, you know, as, as an industry, we can't agree on the color of the sky, um, which is really bad for a lot of us. Um, but if, if we could drive the regulation, it would be better than it being being government because then you have a lot of people who have a lot more power, who know a lot less about what they're, what needs to happen being paid for by people with pockets a lot deeper than ours. Um, it's, it's gonna be interesting on how, how it goes to maintain. And I think, I think of a lot of the bigger providers that, that provide the super cheap, you know, your, your compu comps, your, um, all connected. They're, they're going to have a whole harder time adapting when regulation comes down because they are so vast. The lot of, a lot of the smaller, not necessarily myself, I'm not complimenting myself on this, but a lot of the smaller, more agile teams will be able to, to adapt and respond faster and meet those needs. Um, but it's going to be a shakeup regardless, wherever it comes from or whenever it happens. Yeah. Um, and so as far as, because there's, there's aside from the target of the regulation, you also have the, the attempt to self-regulate and the attempt to you know, insert the MSP side into the governmental regulations. Do you think that's an effective measure? The, the self-regulation, I don't, I don't necessarily, see that's, that's a bit of a loaded question because a little bit. if, if, if we, if we looked at self-regulating, you know, every, everyone out there would be doing the right things all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, myself included, you know, every, everybody's guilty of taking shortcuts here and there. Um, but um, I, I think the better we are as a community and as a group of organizations, the better off we'll be at, at driving that. Um, Kaseya getting hacked was a big problem for us because that looks negatively on us as an industry. And, and that put us right in the limelight of saying, okay, somebody needs to step in and tell these people how to do their job. Um, yeah. So, so the, if, uh, there, there have been initiatives by individuals, um, to try to form like committees and stuff. And I know there's, there's one big one that's out there. I forget the name of it. Um, who were trying to put forward legislation and to try to have like monthly meetings and set up something like CompTIA, um, with that, uh, the goal in mind of to have the MSP write the regulation and have the governments adopt it. Um, 
again, that's a lot, a lot of these organizations like that are on the bigger side. Um, and I'm not even sure that my MSP would be open to joining something like that. It'd be a, it'd be an interesting internal conversation we'd have from your perspective. Do you think that's a good idea to, to, to join us on an initiative like that or to start initiatives like that? I, I do. I, I think, I think initiatives like that are a good time. Uh, you know, there's in, even in MSP geek, there's been several like multiple chats about it. Um, I know CompTIA has their managed services Trustmark, yeah. which which is currently really the only, um, in terms of like the good housekeeping seal of approval yeah. that I that I know of for our industry right now. Um, I'd like to see a lot more of those. And to be honest, I don't know a lot about the managed managed services Trustmark from CompTIA. Um, I've talked to a couple people who have it. And I was at least glad to know that it wasn't kind of like the former NIST self-certification where you just went by and you checked the boxes and said, yes, 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 yes. Yeah, NIST certified, I guess that they're all checked. Yeah. And and um, I think, you know, that's, that's CompTIA as an organization, obviously, you know, they're, they're very involved with everything. They're very engaged. Um, I think we'll see a lot of push from companies like ConnectWise and Datto to, to create those standards, to create those, um, those, those frameworks or, or certifications as it was, but they're all going to really, you know, for the, for the industry, they need to be able to work together to make that happen and not be competing. It's, uh, you know, the XKCD goes back to, you know, we have 14 standards. We need one to compile them all. Now we have 15 competing standards yeah. is, is I think is going to be what it happens before it gets better. Yeah. Um, I think that it's a good attempt, but yeah, I don't know how effective it's going to be. Um, there's a lot of money in regulation, uh, on the government side, you know, setting up people to certify you and setting up people to audit you and, you know, and building that is a lot of work and attempting to regulate yourself still at, it could be in the best interest and everyone could be fully behind a standard that all their best pays agree on. But at the end of the day, it's the senators and the house of reps that are signing this stuff into law and they could say something completely different than what's actually useful to the industry. So it's something that I think we need to keep in mind, but I don't know how well, how well it'll translate. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what our effectiveness, effectiveness, effectiveness on it would be. Um, that's, I mean, that's, you know, kind of, kind of, like I said earlier, you know, it's being made, th these decisions are going to be made by people with, um, very much less knowledge than we as an industry have, but with influenced by people with much larger pockets. So, yeah. you know, the, the hope of, of uh, this, this will go back to, to another one of our topics, community and, and, you know, being able to be involved with the people who will be encouraging and, and talking about this and, and so on and so forth. But um, I, th I think that's, that's, we just got to keep our finger on the pulse with it. And, and know where it's going so um yeah it's a it's a difficult it's a it's one of those things that were too soon to really be able to see where the the lines are being drawn um the louisiana legislation was a surprise to everyone and now uh everyone's super worried about like cmmc and and regulations along that nature with it and i don't know if i'm not sure at least i haven't heard of any conversations around um the federal government getting involved um and in, in discussing putting the you know stuff like cmmc or stuff like those kind of standards in place to to require for msps no, I, I haven't yet but i mean i mean cmmc is going to be and, and it already is one of those um shit that rolls downhill kind of Kind of regulations is is it's going to start with DOD and we're going to see it 
further along every level. Suddenly it'll become everybody who works with the city governments, every, anybody who works with an organization that works with the city government um, is, is kind of where I see that going, which, you know, it, it started with, with CM, CMC as it started, you know, great, great in concept, great in detail. Then it got sidelined and hit by COVID. Um, you know, there's a lot of, to, to, they came into play with that. Um, but it's, it's definitely a decent, as it stands, a decent framework. But, but I think somebody mentioned about, uh, brain virus mentioned about HIPAA being a cash cow is, is now you have, you have people making decisions on CMMC whose influence comes around being, um, making money off, off the regulation. Um, and that's, that's, that's where those decisions are being made. I, I, I sound like a, you know, political, I guess sound. I mean, it's, it's true. I mean, if there's, if there's money in something, it's, it's going to get, it's going to attract a lot of individuals. It's, you know, the higher the amount you can make, the, the, the more powerful those individuals could be. Um, so to, to kind of, you know, deregulate ourselves from regulation, um, we're in an ever changing environment. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I think, I, I think that a smaller company is more nimble and agile, but I also think it's in your best interest in the future for how certain things are going. Like with Microsoft's changes yes. to, um, everything that they're they're planning on they're having a they're moving to you know more of the power framework um the you know power apps power automate um intune lighthouse um that stuff is going to benefit i think smaller businesses than it will for bigger ones um how do you see the future of that type of automation going um right right along those lines with with I think we'll start seeing more siloed automation products like we see with Intune, kind of with Lighthouse, um, because it is it is all still relevant to to the tenant. I think I think your your days of of Connectwise and Kaseya and um, your your larger PSAs and RMNs are really going to go by the wayside. Um, I, you know, Gav, Gav wrote a big article about it, and I, I, I referenced his blog and his expertise on that, on that conversation. Um, but it's, you know, you, we're, we're going to see, and we already see it a lot, a lot of, a lot of stuff moving to Intune and to Autopilot that can be done with, you know, that we were doing with ConnectWise, and it's now it's being done natively within the Microsoft suites. I think we'll see a lot of things with the Power Framework, which we as IT providers and, and MSPs, TSPs, MSSPs, whatever, can really embrace to, to develop our, our business applications and our application flows around to, to do things along the lines of, of improving our processes and automating our processes. Um, you know, we, we see a lot of it in, in what Amibot's doing with with PowerShell being able to reference certain APIs, create users if necessary, um, pull licensing information. If the license information is is needed, then add a license. You know, taking taking somebody's onboarding process and making it as one click as possible. Um, I, I the the more the more we really um, and the more we we end up end up in a world that's API based, where where an application can reach out and talk to another application, more so than um, needing a needing a human involvement or a person involvement. The the more value we as MSPs will bring to our customers, because suddenly onboarding an employee doesn't become a thirty step process. It becomes a okay. You got a new employee. What computer? Click a button, and they're done. Um, even, even up to as much as, as being able to provide a tool to our customers so that, you know, if, and this is all big picture, but seeing it interfacing with like their, 
their accounting or their HR software, their um, their in their time card, time clock software, where they can, you know, enter the employee's information, click a button, and it's using the APIs and like Paycor, Gusto, whatever paychecks, whatever opportunity, you know, whatever piece of software is there to do that. And um, think, thinking about things like that, you're all, you're just, you're continuing to improve on, on business processes using technology. Um, and it's not always, you know, not everything's a technology issue, not everything's a technology solution, but it, it is really an opportunity to, to use those kind of tools for that. Um, in, in all, you know, our, a lot of our jobs is already more automated. You know, with, with Windows 3, Microsoft 365, a person signs into a computer, they sign in with their Azure credentials, they open Outlook and they're, they're basically already pre-configured. Um, you know, a lot, of, a lot of the manual pieces of our jobs are, have, have just gone by the wayside because things have gotten better. And that's, you know, that's a good thing. We're not dealing with um, the small issues when you're not dealing with um, the, oh, we need to set up Outlook for this person because yeah. Microsoft has realized, you know, where, where things go, where the designs are going, you know, you, you know, you used to be able to do all that through group policy and it's just not as necessary anymore. Um, and now with Intune kind of taking over that Active, Direct, Active Directory group policy piece um, for, for Azure joint devices, it's, it's a, um, you know, that's, very powerful tool set. It, it's a lot. It's a lot that can be done. You know, I, I, I get in my. You know, I think we all get in our head a little bit. Like, oh, you know, what is it? What is everything we could do here? And it really is about everything. You know, if it has an API endpoint, you can automate it. Um, yeah, if it's you're well, right. if, it's, if it's well documented. Well, so. I mean, even then, if you have spent enough time, you can figure it all out. I mean, there's been APIs I've hit that I just have no clue what it does, and I just keep smashing at it until stuff works. Yep. Um, but like, yeah, that's 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 definitely true. Um, how how familiar how, have you deployed Intune yet to any of your client base? Um, only at a very minimum level. Um, I I've recently started trying to get into it a little more. Um, I I don't have the experience or expertise on it. A lot of people have. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, but it's, it's, it's actually, I mean, it's something I'm excited about, um, because it is, you know, I always, I always like group policy. Um, I may be the only person in the world who likes group policy, but I love group policy because of everything you could do with it, whether it came down to, you know, when you first walked into a customer and you did a group policy audit and you did little things like you set their company logo as the login background and, and crap like that. Yeah. That, um, that goes a long way. <laughs> they, you know, it's, it's, it's the little things like that that people look at and they're like, Oh, this is, this is dumb. But um, then they turn around and they're like, Oh, well, this is your, your customer looks at that and they're like, that's cool. Oh, that's so cool. Now, now our, our logo's there. And it's, yeah, and it's, it's a not business. big, but and it's, it's things like, you know, re, pre-configuring, um, you know, redirected pro, profile redirection and redirected folders yeah. and um, Outlook auto configure. You know, there were, the customer I had a long time ago was like, you know, I wish I could just go to any computer and log in and my documents were there and my email worked. I was like, make that happen. You don't know how excited those little things make people. Um, so I, I'm, I'm excited to see where it goes and where it is. So, so you, you have an RMM tool, right? Yep. That is ConnectWise Automate. Yes. Um, now for those unfamiliar with ConnectWise Automate who may be listening, it is a very, very, very powerful tool. Um, it is extremely customizable and will allow you to do anything that you could probably dream of. The problem is it takes a lot of time and dedication to learn how to get the maximum throughput and output of that system. Uh, it's generally as an MSP, if you don't have someone in a full time, you're not getting the usage out of the system that you can. Being the size of your business as it is, 
do you think that moving to an Intune lighthouse setup will be more beneficial to you as a business than saying something as like Automate or Ninja or Datto even? Um, and I don't see the benefits, the, the full benefits of, of something like Intune. Right, right now, in tune with Lighthouse, um, I see where it's going. I, I, I don't think it covers the full gamut of everything that you can do and everything that can be done in Automate yet, at least, at least now. Um, you know, my kind of expectation is it'll get there, and then at some point, an RMM tool becomes moot. Um, the only thing really you're adding to it is your ability to remote into a desktop. Which then, you know, that's that's not necessarily your RMM tool. That's that's remote control. Yeah, um, I wouldn't necessarily love that. I because I still see a, a place in that future with Intune and the power framework being as, you know, as perfect as it can be. I still see remote control being like an almost requirement because sometimes you just yep. can't walk a user through something and you just need to do it yourself. So and that yeah, may be it, something it, they add in later. Exactly. Or it's, or it becomes something that you 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 can in you can uh i think the polling time on intune is what four hours i'm not 100 percent sure so i mean you know there's there is it's not it's not perfect in that sense it's not there and ready for the the immediate immediate response immediate record immediate checking um yeah yeah i i agree brain i i made a i built a table yesterday and it was uh not pretty, but all I needed was some lumber and nails to build a table. Table, yeah. um, but um, you know, I, I don't, I don't see Microsoft trying to replace like a like a Kaseya or a Datto or a Ninja. I see with... them replacing them accidentally. Yeah, yeah, I don't see that being the goal because but... Intune is a cost. You have to have the license to to be able to utilize Intune. Um, same with some of the Power Framework. You have to have the proper license to be able to use those. So, being making it easier for me to do stuff inside of a, a Microsoft tenant um, is in the best interest of Microsoft, mm -hmm. and that's the only reason why they're doing some of this stuff. It makes it easier for businesses to deploy their things. Um, they they make it easier to you know, if it's easier for me to utilize Microsoft services, then it's more likely I'm going to subscribe to those services. Um, and especially since it's a monthly recurring basis, it's cha-ching, right? It's right. I mean, $30 a month. I don't even know what the pricing is, but let's say it's $30 a month for a year times every tenant. I mean, for some businesses that can be, you know, 10 tenants or 300 tenants, you know, it's, that's a, that's a, not a short amount of money. No, throwing in some development time. I think. I think. Um, was it? I I completely lost that thought. Um. No, never mind. Go ahead. I don't. I forget <laughs> where I was going. I think Microsoft's plan for the future is desktop as a service. Yeah. Um. So. Basically, you log into any PC, you log into any web app, and boom, your stuff's there. Um, remote yeah. in from your home or whatever, mm -hmm. and you're it's it's a desktop as a service. You're licensed for whatever apps you have, and then that's I think that's their current end goal for their major changes. And being able to do that is a requirement to be able to have like standard applications to be able to share files and folders across the enterprise to be able to troubleshoot things and it's that eliminates a lot of the MSP MSP RMM workload um if if stuff is already there and already automated and it's it's modern it's, I mean most of the most of applications are moving to the cloud yep. or have an option to migrate to the cloud so being able to just you have a web browser and that's all you really need aside from some specific subset of applications like you know if you're a graphic designer or yeah editor or, add stuff like that yeah you know and, and, 
Go ahead. I, I, I think Microsoft is, is at, at least starting to come to the realization of, you know, their, their direct customers for 365 products are really, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's a lot of businesses out there that pay for 365 directly, whether or not they have IT companies supporting them or not, but, but their, their real customer for that is enterprise. Um, that any, anybody under 500 employees, 100 employees probably has an IT company supporting them. Um, and that, that means that either A, they look, as at, look at us as partners that can help their business and help them along the way, or more than likely B, which was kind of referenced by the upcoming price increase that they see us as a profit center that they can exploit. So, I mean, aside from the fact that there's no competition, um, the, the what, you don't the Google Workplace price, isn't a good competition. Um, no, the 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 recent price changes and hikes and stuff like that are very concerning to a lot of people very rightfully mm -hmm. so um because i mean to it goes back to like the isps in the united states where there's mainly two you have a dsl provider and a cable provider yep. um you might be able to surface fiber but they're generally going to be from the same company mm -hmm. um so you generally only have two companies and they're much more likely to work together to make sure that you pay the most than to worry about actual competition in the market. So from that perspective, do you have concerns uh, as far as, what are your concerns as far as that goes, as far as Microsoft being basically a monopoly in this space and potentially kicking out RMM platforms? Um, I, I, I don't have a lot of concerns with that. Um, there, there's ex existential dread, maybe, but but Sorry. not as much <laughs> concerns, um, because Microsoft is now that that you know that somewhat of a, that required evil, you know, that that is the option we have to work with. It is the option that we're going to end up working with. Um, it's the best option of of what's there, at least in in my opinion. But it's it's something we're going to have to work with. And, and I don't worry too much about them driving out the, you know, even, even if driving out an RMM provider, I don't necessarily worry about them driving out IT in general because IT just basically supports end users. Um, whether it's the same guy emailing you five times a day that he forgot his password or, you know, the, the major issues like dealing with, with, Breach, breach response or instant response and, and navigating that and learning to be being the trusted experts for our customers in those fields to make decisions that maybe they need a helping hand in making. Um, yeah. So what do you think about um, the transition happening with the new Microsoft infrastructure from uh, basically what is a managed contract break fix managed contract to more of a services setup because the resetting the passwords will still happen but the there'll be less likely of issues that you'll automate away because at the end of the day if there's a virus or an infection in a machine you could just blow it away and Intune will set it back up or you could set up a password reset functionality inside of AD with power apps or another application so that, that you don't even get those. They just type in secure information, verify themselves yeah. and reset their own password. Um, as an MSP, it, you know, do you think that transition will happen to where it will be mostly professional services and less likely help desk? More, yes. And, more and more so. Yes. But also no, there, there will always be, um, there will always be the, the hand-holding, the, uh, the, um, somebody who, who can be that person somebody calls when there's issues that they just don't understand. Uh, I mean, you know, you could, you could put together a pass, a forgot password button. I mean, how many, how many emails a day do you send out? That's like, well, there's a forgot password button for that application. It'll send you an email, click it and you're in just because people don't necessarily 
understand a process. And then that is, that is maybe, maybe less help desk, maybe more. Um, I'd consider that help desk, but yeah, because they're, they're opening a ticket for a forgot password. And I hope we don't reset passwords. You have to verify your information here. I think there will start to be a, a, a very low level password reset add a new employee by entering, you know, pieces of information to be done versus the, the higher level techs that are dealing with major issues or dealing with higher level issues. I think you'll start to see a, a knowledge gap needed between level one and level three with almost level two engineers and techs being kind of pushed through the wayside because, because a lot of problems won't be, won't be there. Um, QuickBooks online goes down. QuickBooks online's down. We'll tell you when yeah. it's back up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, Brandon pointing out passwordless. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's that's true. You can absolutely go passwordless, yeah. but then you it's have very to worry scary, about. Very scary, but very cool at the same time. I got a new phone. What do I do? Okay, well, go and download the app. Go do this. Go. Yeah. What's the app store? Okay. So I mean, there's still. What OS do you have? <laughs> Dell. Um, oh, oh God. Uh... <laughs> but. Um, but I, I think I think you'll start to see see a, a unnecessary knowledge gap just between between those levels, yeah. because things are self healing, they're self remediating. Um, the level one tech is just as capable of following a document that that shows somebody how to do an Intune reset, and rejoin, and reconfigure as the level three guy who programmed it. So now suddenly those level two type jobs aren't aren't there anymore. Um, yeah, or they're much more limited instead of having an equal number of level one, level two, and level three, you know, at deteriorating, you have more level ones and level two, more level twos and threes. You'll have a lunch, a lot of level ones and mm-hmm. then one or two level twos and then a lot of level threes. Yep. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah. that's, that's, that's good. Um, so with that in mind, obviously the world is changing. It's changed so much since uh, I came into it officially as a job. Um, how how do you how do you adapt skill set your skill set to make sure that you're you're constantly keeping up with the new technologies you're constantly dedicating time to seeing what's out there how do you how do you work on that issue um a lot of that's just keeping you know if your finger on the pulse of what's happening um you know make sure you're constantly checking out your and this will this will feed into a, a lot of our fourth fourth conver- fourth piece of conversation, which is the, the communities you're part of. You know, you, you have to be keeping your finger on the pulse of of what's happening and what's going on. Um, whether it's simple things like setting up news alerts in Google to get you know news alerts when somebody talks about new technologies or regulations, or you you flag words like ConnectWise data. Um, it, it, is an, it is an active piece of that. And, and a lot of it's, there's, when it, when it comes to tech, you always have you know, tech workers and tech enthusiasts. And, and tech enthusiasts may not always be the best people for tech workers, but tech workers tend to have a good deal of tech enthusiasm. Um, and me personally, I've tried to, I've tried to embrace at least that piece because I, you know, I do, I, as, as much of a pain in the ass as it is in this industry sometimes, I, I do still enjoy new technologies. It's, it makes me giddy going out and playing with something and putting it together and, ooh, what can this do? What can this do? You know, it's, it's almost like building Legos. Um, you know, there's always, yeah. there, there's always, you know, a fun result at the end that may not be what you expected, but it's, it's entertaining. Um, and, and me personally, I, I've always, you know, Still try to find the fun in that, which which is maybe not the best advice, but it it, it gives me the the happiness to go out there and, and look at something and try something. And if something you know, if there's a skill set I'm missing, um, make sure to to see what what it is or how I can learn it or what how I can augment it. Um, yeah, um, Zaf made you, a good point that the industry is moving towards more specializations and less generalist. Uh, workers. So yep. being able to work exclusively in PowerShell to do things is, is much more sought after than someone who can do a little bit of PowerShell, a little bit of Power Apps, a little bit of server admin, a little bit of exchange. Like that's, 
it's nice to have some of those guys, but it's much more sought out to be able to just go into PowerShell because generally Microsoft's documentation isn't as robust or as understandable as others who've put out the same documentation in a much more readable format. Um, there's been plenty of times where I've looked at Microsoft's documentation on like a PowerShell commandlet and just been like, who wrote this? What are they thinking? Mm -hmm. And then just Googled the commandlet and found someone who's like, oh, that's, that's much more, you know, that's easily digestible. Yeah. Um, so, you know, someone who can easily do that and just whip up, uh, email creation or pull data down from 365 mm -hmm. and, you know, being able to do a whole lot more with just a single programming interface like that is, is, is much more sought after. Yeah. And then, and then, and then the power you, you can do with that, um, with, you know, suddenly your, your one PowerShell command becomes a script that that creates a user. It checks license counts. It pulls a license from distribution and assigns it to the account. It, it assigns that license to the user it created it. Um, then it, then it becomes a flow of things. Um, I mean, my personal PowerShell, I, I'm not great. I'm good. I'm decent. I don't even know if that's, that's a term that might just be my imposter syndrome. Um, but at least, you know, I know the, that if I have a PowerShell issue, I just need to say it can't be done in PowerShell and Kelvin will tell me how. So, yeah, Kelvin's a, a, a real good resource for, for PowerShell or, you know, the Slack channel PowerShell is a real good resource for a lot of people as well. Um, then there's plenty of other PowerShell communities. Uh, so speaking of communities, I know that, um, it's to, to me, it, it's near and dear to my heart. Um, you, you know, communities of all sorts and shapes and sizes I've been a part of and being able to run MSP geek with the, the team that we have is, uh, broadened my horizons in a way that not else, nothing else can really do. Um, and being able to meet like people like yourself and, and hundreds of other individuals, uh, through just casual chats, DMS, uh, just fun conversations, meetups, all, all that good stuff has, has been, you know, uh, I would say life-changing. So, um, what do you think, uh, what are, what are your thoughts and opinions on the, the needs and requirements of, of communities? Um, you know, we, we as an IT industry is, it, it's, it's probably one of the most rapidly, it is probably the most rapidly changing industry out there. Um, and that in turn creates a lot to keep up with. Um, the being able to have people in places like MSP Geek, um, you know, the other, other various communities, whether it's, um, sorry, I have my, have my notes up somewhere and I don't know where they went. Um, you know, keeping, keeping up with, um, news alerts, uh, RSS feeds, every, everything you can find to ingest in such a way that it, um, that, that you're able to get the relevant information in is, is important. And a lot of that rely, a lot of that's going to come from your peers, you know, just being part of your communities, you know, knowing when, who to trust, knowing who not to trust. I hate to say that way, but, but, you know, sometimes that's, it's not always going to, going to be the people who present something that's, that's in a correct way. Um, you know, you, you see somebody come in on Reddit or MSP, oh my God, ConnectWise was hacked. Yeah. Well, it wasn't, you left your account without an MFA on it. And somebody admin, admin was still present from 2012 that you never removed. <laughs> yeah, ex exactly. And, and, um, but, but, you know, you know, with certain people, if they come in and they're like, Hey, you know, do this, do that. We're looking at the save breach, you know, if Kyle from Huntress comes in and he's like, shut down your VSA servers. If I have a VSA server, I'm, I'm shutting it down. If yeah. user 0276389 with an egg comes in and says that I, I might not do that. Um, yeah, it's you one know, of those things you have to build trust in. That's hundred percent true. Yeah, and I think it's I think it's important, you know, when you're when you're parts of these communities to not just monitor. Don't just keep an eye on everything. Don't just, um, you know, I'll look and see what's going on. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. Participate because it's always an opportunity to learn something. Um, you know, I took a, one of one of my notes here for for this section is embrace your wrong because there will always be times where you're wrong about something. 
And it's a great opportunity to learn, to, to find out why, to embrace it, to know, and, and be something better. Um, that's, yeah. uh, and, that and, and the, com the community has, you know, it's introduced me to a lot of great people, especially a lot of Kyles. There's so many, many Kyles. Kyles. So many Kyles. It's great. I love, I love it. It's weird because I was having a conversation with uh, Kyle from ConnectWise and, uh, and it, I was like, you know, Kyle, I understand it's just weird having to say my own name and to address someone else. It's, it's not often I have to do that. It was kind of cool. I'm lucky there's not a lot of Drews, so. It's true. Um, one thing I will say as far as the community goes, interacting in the way that you normally interact in Slack or in Reddit is everything is text-based, right? Yep. The problem is you can't really infer and understand the intent behind text. And everyone nah. has a completely different text language based on their mood, their time of day, uh, their area. Um, you know, they may use like text speak, like, you know, phone texting speak was like with U's and R's and the other day, then they may spell it out later. You know, it just depends on a whole bunch of stuff. So it's hard. You need to go in when you're asking questions and having that communication to be on the lighter side of mm -hmm. someone's intent. Um, it's also important to understand, uh, like, especially if you're asking a question or trying to get information, um, you want to go into it with a, a modicum of understanding that we're, you're asking a bunch of IT people, IT questions. And the first thing you do as someone on the help desk or as someone in the IT world is you ask for information that you don't have. Yeah. And that can seem condescending that can seem like someone's crapping all over your ideas and your methodology and how to do something unintentionally because absolutely you have all the information they don't and they're trying to help you so they're trying to get you to have provide information to help make them make a decision or to provide a solution to help um so that's it's it's something that's you know i try to convey to insert some individuals and it's important that uh y y you have that understanding when going into these places yeah, and I, I always, I always try to, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of it as everyone is. I always try to assume everybody is 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 being lighthearted or or assuming the best. Sometimes, you know, that that methodology means that you're not taking somebody serious when they are serious. Um, but I, you, you can't. I, I try not to assume malintent until it it becomes obvious. Yeah, um, that's true. Because if it's if it's malintent, you're going to easily see it uh, in the yeah. continued conversation. Exactly, you know, and, and we are we are there to. We, our training is gather information. You know what what is the information about the situation that I need to know before I make it a, a diagnosis? It's, it's like when you go to the doctor. There's a reason why when you go to the doctor, they take your temperature, they take your heart beat, you know, your pulse, your blood pressure and everything because they're trying to get an overall picture of your body before they they begin looking at the symptoms to create a diagnosis you know if i'm feeling lightheaded and suddenly i go in and, and i have a blood pressure that's that's bottomed out there's there's root cause there or there is at least you know one reason and that you start trouble choosing that root cause um and I, I you know i see and i think a lot of people forget that sometimes it's, it's stupid mistakes. Um, I don't know how many times I've reset a password or reset my password for an account just to realize I was typing my name wrong and I had never bothered to re-enter my username and I just clicked back and then done that. It. It's, it's sh sh I sh shamefully admit that I've done that at least twice that I can remember. And oh, I've done, I've done it a ton. <laughs> I, 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 I openly admit that it's, it's an issue I've done. Well, it's like, it's like Twitch. I just went through a password reset process like three times because it's asking for my username, not my email address. And I'm just so used to putting my damn email address in everywhere that <laughs> it's like, Dude, what's wrong with you? Oh yeah, never mind. Sorry. It's me. It's I'm the problem. I'm sorry. Yeah. Application. Yep. So, um, um I mean, that's, that's fair. Uh, so what do you think uh what are the what are some of the benefits um from some of the communities you're a part of 
you know, um, MS, MSP Geek is definitely is definitely the technically the more technically focused group. I, I find you all are um, everybody in MSP Geek is just it's we are a bunch of technical people. We tend to get along very well. Um, I consider a lot of you some of my my greatest friends. Um, I consider a couple of you my greatest enemies, but you know what? Right. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. That's right. Um, you know, being being able to have a, a sounding board where you you can bounce those technical ideas off of, and you can have that communication with people who kind who who think along the same way you do, is, is definitely valuable. And just just the just the resource of the resources of people where um so it's like people you know one of the first things that you always see on facebook is people complaining about this you complaining about that how can i find how can i find uh, my connect wise contract is up for renewal and no one will reach out to me and and uh, you know being able to have access to people who have access to the people or a lot of times in our case now with people like mcgee and um rob ray and everybody else there we we've created a direct pipe you know we have a direct pipeline to people who can resolve the issues that we need resolved when we need them resolved um it's it's definitely beneficial you know obviously it's not escalation shouldn't be the case every time yeah and that's now, that's I, a lot I of will things. say that is one of the things when we first had vendor interaction at msp geek specifically is that we wanted to build and foster a place to where that that two it's a two-way communication was available absolutely and that issues that arise can be addressed. And if they have questions or something, they can reach out to you. Like one of the biggest things I don't think vendors take advantage of enough is, is reaching out to their group and getting feedback that's important, such as features, um, mm -hmm. where something goes, you know, what problems that need to be addressed, things along that nature. It's a, a bottle, not a bottleneck, but a an area that I don't think they do enough of, at least in the communities. Um, they may do it on their own initiatives. They may have their own groups that they plan and do. So, but getting the real technical people involved is, I think, an important step and something that some of them don't do very well. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's a, an important aspect. Um, but it's surprising to me how at what point people actually go to those vendors that we have available in MSP Geek and interact with those vendors as an escalation point. It's generally yeah. after they can't actually get the help through support. And I haven't seen anyone abuse that system that we have in place yet. Not we'll, I, I, will, I will delete you if you do, um, because we want them here to be nice and friendly to everybody so that everyone can have advantages. Um, but no one it, it's i i have expected at this point with some of our bigger vendors that people would abuse that system and they have yet to 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 do that and it's 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 an interesting thing i figured we would have to yeah. have some actual conversations but people don't tend at least the it professionals don't tend to abuse systems they know works exactly and i think i think it's because it's it's partially a system we're all part of already you know we we don't want end users calling us directly open a ticket we'll deal with it we'll go through the process that, that's established um but but the same thing if i you know if i left a customer's ticket open for a password reset for three days and they couldn't work yeah then then it makes all sense what makes sense that you know somebody would yeah. reach out directly and circumvent that process because the process obviously isn't working yeah um and, and, but yeah, no, I, I agree. I'm, I am really, I, I, you know, I, I, when I saw, you know, when I see people join from, from organizations, I'm always like, well, you know, you, you might be, I, I always worry a little bit. I get a little scared for them, but I, I have candid conversations um, about what the potential issues could be with everyone who joins. That's, that's yeah. a bet size because when when ConnectWise decided to bless our community with their presence, um, that was that was a heart to heart conversation. It was like, look, ConnectWise is loved by many, mm -hmm. but complained about by everyone. Yeah. So 
in a free area to, to communicate, there could potentially be issues with people communicating ineffectively to mm -hmm. your face. <laughs> and, and I think we, we see, we, we see it occasionally. Yeah. And not, not necessarily a circumvention, circumvention of a process, but a very Inventing. local candid communication about an experience that, that maybe, yeah. that maybe here um, in terms of it could have been delivered at here. Yep. But at, at the same time, there's that, that goes back to a lot of the, the text without emotion, um, you or know, filters, and, depending and filters and, and that you, I, I think sometimes you, you overcompensate in text to, to, you know, it's, it's to deal with that emotion. You know, yeah. you, you, you express things in a different way because I, I can't tell you, Kyle, I'm not, I'm not upset with you. I'm just disappointed. Like it doesn't just come across the same way. Right. So, um, and I, and, and for me, I'm very, you can read my every emotion that I'm going through on my face, um, at all times, you know, it's something, you know, people are like, Oh, I can, I can, I can tell how you are, uh, filling right now just by the way I, I i respond because i don't i don't turn that filter off unfortunately maybe i should sometimes it probably get me in a lot less shit with people but <laughs> i understand um, that but but you you lose you do lose that that piece with with texting and i think i think sometimes people over exaggerate to express their frustration because that's all they have yeah um and big shout out to any vendor who's willing to go public with their faces and they aren't uh as loved as huntress is and they are what as loved as huntress oh yeah i think everybody loves huntress because i, it's I love just... huntress Hunt kyle was our second geek cast he was the second geek cast that was ever presented they haven't done anything to uh i i, I don't know a negative thing that they've that anybody has said about them yet. I don't think I've ever seen anything bad. I, I've got something. I'm still waiting on my swag bag, Kyle. Oh yeah, me too. I was <laughs> I was totally gonna do a pool jump in a Huntress shirt and I never got one. Oh I'm still waiting but, on my swag bag. It can't be as good as Mindy's, according to uh my insider information. Uh mm. but I I I was supposed to get one for some, I even forget what it's been a while now for the reason it happened. But, uh, my boss, Mindy green got one and, uh, and I expressed, uh, an event that, you know, it, it saddened me greatly, um, that I didn't I, get I, a, a bag. So I've, I've never heard you say those four words together. My boss, Mindy green. He's, he's my boss. Uh, I don't think I try to, I don't hide it. I mean, he hired me away from my previous company. Um, so I, I know. So it's just, I've just, I've never heard those words come out of your mouth in that order. So I could, I could say my boss, the genius Mindy green. Oh, that's even better. It is the kickboxing genius. Uh, a lot more genius than that. I, I, when he retires, it's going to be a sad day for it. I'll just say that. I, I'm excited for Mindy retiring because that means we're going to get Mindy version of SBS. Uh, maybe he may he may rewrite SBS from the ground up and only PowerShell, horribly maybe. coded PowerShell. That's fine. <laughs> so so I'm sold. Take my money. Oh God, um, uh, such a such a great. Uh, no. You know, that's one thing about communities. You get a whole bunch of inside jokes. Mindy loves SBS. Yeah, he does. Um, Surprised this didn't like saying SBS didn't just bring him here. He might be watching. I don't know. I could look um, it up, but he, I'm, I'm scared I, to find the answer. He he might not be. I think it's it's a holiday. Is it? And I know it's a holiday like in the area, but like, I don't know when that starts. Because you have Yom Kippur next week. Yeah. No, Yom Kippur. It is, it's Yom Kippur. Like starting tonight. Is it tonight? That that may be yeah. what I'm. I believe may, I'm, I'm a week like, ahead. <laughs> I'm like 99, 98, 97.3% sure. So, um, yeah. 
But going back to communities, um, you do foster a lot of relationships. Um, yep. Even with competing communities, ain't that right, Ray? I see you. Yeah, in chat. you know it's it's um, and you know because I, I sit in the I sit in the MSPs RS Discord. Um, I'm there too. And you know it's there each it it is two completely different communities even even with a lot of overlapping people, um, and it it is you know just I, I'm probably more just a lurker there. I occasionally engage. Um, that I, you know, I'm MSP geek, but it's it's definitely it's definitely a different community. Um, wait, Ray's that's not Ray's not an admin in MSP RS. That's Kelvin, right? I think Ray runs it. Oh, does he? I'm pretty okay. sure. I know he runs Reddit. I know he's I know he's a red admin for the R slash oh. MSP. Hold on, your face got replaced by Discord. <laughs> that's fine. It won't move. There we go. Now you're not your face isn't Discord anymore. Um, you know, there's, there's um, and and just keeping keeping a finger on the pulse on it on as many as possible is is a good thing. Um, you know, I think I think a lot of things that we we don't really take into account are the, you know, a lot of a lot of what we learn and what we get from these communities isn't necessarily always technical either. Um, it's it's as as IT people we tend to bury ourselves in computers and it helps us learn to deal with different people in different aspects of life um, from from the um, super one way to a super another. I, I don't I don't know any way to say that without without yeah. calling calling certain people out. But smart not, dog. Not, not 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 certain people individually like my individuals but but you know it's 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 florida dealing with with extremely you know either this way or this way people and and your job is you have you have to interact with all these people you you don't have a choice not to especially if, if you're working in a business sales role or a help desk role um you know fortunately as a business owner i i can choose if there's businesses i don't want to do business with uh i can choose not to but if you're not your business owner, you may not have that that flexibility. Um, As a smart dog said in chat, uh, there are no competing communities. That's correct. We're we're all friendly. We're all like, there, there, there's no competition. It's just friendly banter. I was gonna say, compared to MSP Geek, there really is no competition. Ooh, I I didn't say. <laughs> Um, but yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, Reddit, you know, slash RMSP, there's MSPs RS, there's IT yeah. pool party. There's a ton of individual communities and, and stuff to be a part of. And, um, it's a, it's, I'm a part of most, if not all of them. Um, so, and, and there's, it, you're right. It's a different, it's like, it's a different, it's like going to a different, like if, as a company, you know, like a mm -hmm. major conglomeration, on floor yeah. one, you know, if you go to floor two, it's a different attitude, but it may be the same entire shop. You know, floor three is the that's same. Because, that's because the vending machine on floor two is stocked way better than the vending machine on floor one. You know, they had Hostess Donuts. Man. Reminds me of the episode of The Office where Dwight took all the snacks out and put fruit into the vending machine. You know, I don't know that I've ever watched a full episode of The Office all the way through. Where's the delete button? I'm deleting you. <laughs> I just, I, it's, it's just one of those shows that I've just never been able to get into. You have to. Let's start a season two. Yeah, it's, it's, I, I, I might, it's, I, it's that type of interview show where it's like, like mockumentary almost, it where is. you set people down and they have fake interviews with them. Same thing with Parks and Rec. I just haven't. Parks and Rec's great too. Like I, and um, I love everybody in it. I just I think that type of show just drives me crazy. I love Parks and Rec. There's a, a scene in Parks and Rec where uh, Amy Poehler is sick, and they're trying to convince her to go home. And um, Andy Dwyer, Chris Pratt, is sitting at the computer, and he's like, "Let me Google your symptoms," and types it into the thing. And he's like, "It says you may have network connectivity problems." And I I died. <laughs> it was it was it's one of the best scenes that I think. Um, that I've that I've seen throughout the show. So, um, but the office is great too. Um, I I recommend starting in season two for those of you who haven't watched it. Season one is hot garbage, uh, but season two is fantastic. Um, it's probably one of my favorite shows ever. 
I just, I just, I've been watching Ted Lasso and I just fe- finished season one. So like I was, I was in this, I kept saying, I almost kept saying regulation or relegation instead of regulation mm-hmm. because I talk about re- relegation all the time for the Brits. I guess they'll understand that. Like, but yeah. For any UKers who might still be awake. <laughs> eh, you know, um, it's so only... we, we've digressed enough. Um, does anyone have any questions uh, that they would like the one man band, uh, the Enigma himself, Drew Hackworth? I mean, any question that popped up, we kind of addressed already. So, um, yeah. but any official questions? You know, this is now's the time to ask them. Oh yeah, and we have to give it like the thirty second delay. Yeah, we have to give it thirty seconds. So we have to fill air. It's like this is this is like a, a good job for me is because I just generally start talking about random stuff. It doesn't really matter while the stream catches up and while people type their questions because as soon as they hear that they you know hey let's ask questions and they gotta wait um, to type that out because you know not everyone types as fast as me. Or is horrible language. It's very fun to have to. Uh... Oh yeah, brain says, uh, "What is wrong with you, Drew? How could you not like those shows?" I concur. Um, I mean, it's 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 um, I don't know. I'm weird. I accept it. Cool. Uh, hey, Drew, I, I, how do you get I, your I, hair to look that good? You know, this is just this is just a uh, gel. I I'm just that good. I, I do a couple karate chops. I throw some gel in it, and it gets the job done. No, I just got a haircut, and it was really bad. So then I had to have, go to a friend and trim it up because where I got my haircut just did an awful job, and I looked like Mo from the Three Stooges. So I couldn't get her to get it right. Oh, yeah. But thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for the compliment on my hair. Uh, where does what's the weirdest thing you have within arm's reach? Um, the weirdest thing, I mean, I have a corkscrew, um, and bottle opener. Yeah, the weirdest thing within weird. arm's reach. I'd call that uh, yeah, necessity. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't know that I have anything that weird in arm's reach. I'm, I'm kind of a like I'm clean desk obsessed, so I don't like stuff on my desk. So I have a mirror if you all want to see yourselves. But um Man, I look good. <laughs> that was that was me trying to uh um I what was, about coolest or useful? Coolest or useful. See, I just I don't have I don't have things in <laughs> arms reach around me. Uh um oh I have this little Cinex. UV phone sanitizer that Cinex or now TD Cinex as they're known as. Oh yeah. Sent me and you put your phone in it for 10 minutes and it's supposed to sanitize it. And I think I've done it twice in six months, but it's just still sitting there over on the corner because it's plugged in. And I'm like, I'll sanitize my phone every day. All right. Since I guess this is now a thing, uh, we have a question. Uh, what color are your underwear? Who said I was wearing any? That's, I mean, it, that's, a, that's an answer. Blue. Blue. So it's blue. Blue. Where Where are you seeing that question? I don't even see that question. Channel. I have all the channels open. So we have Twitch and we have the GeekCast channel. Oh, I, I was, I had, I had, uh, I had Slack minimized. Yeah. You blame Martin. He DM'd me. That's caused fine. me to open shit. It caused me to look over there. <laughs> Thinking, well, thank Martin. Uh, coolest, coolest, weirdest thing within reach to me. Um, this is MSP Geeks and Corporation Letters as a nonprofit company. So I would have to say that's the coolest thing within my reach at the moment. I mean, other than everything else, really, the biggest thing I have is the thermometer because I take my temperature like every day or two. COVID? Yeah. Just... <laughs> That's like a thing. 
at first I was like, that's weird. And then I was like, wait a second, COVID. You know? <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's not, you know, it's not even a good example, but, but still it's like, I'm like, okay. And I've got the little thermometer condoms. Oh, nice. Or you just, I mean, you only need that if you get COVID positive, if you're COVID positive, you just throw it out. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, you just, you just throw out the little plastic piece. Thing. Way... You don't need, I mean, it's five bucks for a thermometer nowadays. Yeah. But it's like, but that way I don't have to, I don't have to clean it. Then I just, you know, I mean, I take it. And... What's your temperature right now? We'll find out in a minute. This is probably the weirdest thing we've done on the MSP Geeky. <laughs> of course, it wouldn't work when I go to do it. Oh, of course not. It's it's watching. It's it's got performance anxiety. Ninety-seven point eight. That's within margins. Uh, what yep. was your worst day in IT? Uh, my worst day in IT was probably the first time. I experienced ransomware oh, and it was September 9th, 2013. Um, that's about the time I first experienced ransomware. And, and it was, um, it was, it was because I, I didn't know what I was dealing. I didn't know what I was dealing with. Um, I, I had never seen it brand new ransom. It's yeah. Brand new where, where it had encrypted files like that before. Um, I, I'd never seen it. You know, I, you, you had seen the deleting icons and deleting files, um, hiding files, but actually encrypting stuff. And it was so slow and it was moving its way across, you know, into servers, across the network. The only thing it was really, because the only thing it was really able to touch was a handful of, um, and it came in through machines configured by a saw company like that they were all just, you know, no, you couldn't put permissions on or you couldn't put antivirus on it. You couldn't put any of anything on it. And it had access to the server file shares because that's where all the company documents were stored. But that's normal um, process 2013. Yep. And it was just, um, no, you know, it wasn't able to move across to any of the other workstations. The only other one it was able to move across to was the one it was the other saw like it because they had, similar admin usernames and passwords, but it, um, but it was just, I was, I would, I had no idea what was going on. And every time I would restore the files, it would happen again. And it wasn't leaving at the time. It wasn't leaving a message or a note in the folders saying, you know, Hey, this has been, this has been, uh, you know, this has been ransomware. It was sitting on the desktop of of the saw where somebody opened the file from that that had the had the ransomware in it. And it was just I, I spent probably two days restoring files and just not knowing what was going on because it was so weird. It was so odd. And that that was that was a really that was so a really bad day. I have a um, very similar experience. Um, our one of our secretaries at my old company got it and I was fresh faced in the IT world, uh, intern. And it was late August, early September, um, when that was occurring and she reached out to me because everyone else was, was busy and she just needed someone to help. Her computer wasn't working. She had a virus or something. Um, so I went to her computer and it had the message up saying, Hey, I've got your files, send me money in Bitcoin, little flashy message and, you know, text box scrolling and stuff. And, uh, she had access to some files in the server share, because again, she had access to a limited amount of, you know, to be able to do her job. Wasn't the full share. Yeah. And, uh, so we had to restore those files from a backup after we wiped her computer. Didn't think anything of it. Like it was, I just figured it was a virus that had attempted to do something with files, whatever, wipe it, move on with my day. And then a few months later, when ransomware got big, I was like, I, uh, I was shocked to know that I was one of the first to be attacked. Technically my company was, um, yep. by ransomware, by, as they sent, they sent a file, she could kind of, uh, word document or a PDF or something. And it was just, 
it was just, just it's just an interesting thing to to be able to be one of the first to experience. Yeah, it, it was. I mean, it was. I, I was my my first. My brain went to hard drive corruption, and I was like, oh, this is this is something about a corrupt hard drive. You know, this is this is raid raid corruption. This is something like that. Um, that's that's really where you know, and it, like it went on for like two days, and I was like, well, okay, then that doesn't make any sense because it's only this share and it was you know going down and, and pulling everything offline and i was there for like 40 hours in three days just beating my head against stuff why was this happening um you know and went went and created new shares and then gave the permissions and then that happened there and i'm like okay something something's wrong and eventually you know found it and it was in the old days of ransomware where there wasn't a risk of, of exfiltration so yeah um that, that was one. That was one of the worst times. The other, the other worst time was probably when um, I didn't know a lot about raid arrays, raid, raid, and um, I was replacing a hard drive, and a Dell technician told me to initiate a a uh, reinitialization, which was the wrong answer. It's rebuild, right? Yeah. No. No, they told me to reinitialize. Yeah, but you want to rebuild the yeah the array. Yeah, reinitialize so, um, would re would wipe the entire volume with fresh space. That's what it did, <laughs> and uh, that was that was a lot of that was restore from cloud backup for a lot of work. So yeah, that um, that's a bad day. Yeah, that was a that was a bad few days, and it was right during a hurricane, and it was um, building took a lightning strike, like the building itself, and. Um, fried a bunch of equipment but of of the server of the server room all that we managed to lose was one hard drive but it was causing an error one, on boot. one hard drive in the entire raid <laughs> yeah and, but, but it was causing a no boot situation yeah. and um so we were able to throw it in it booted or you know went to went to went to power it up and they're like okay i was like it was like do what are we gonna do okay we're gonna go blah 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 reinitialize okay now what now we wait for it to finish finish initializing and rebuilding and that was not what happened so what well, did finish reinitializing lesson, lesson learned start fresh lesson learned yeah um how do you how do you handle and or avoid burnout let me know when you find out vacation time off doing things that aren't it related purposely yeah. specifically not doing uh, if you're not, if you're into IT, um, doing non-IT related things, taking time off, taking health, mental health days, those exist now and are much more prevalent in businesses. You know, as a business owner, Drew can only, Drew can probably take more than most of us, but he also is the only one at his business. So he can't take as many as he probably like. Yeah. Um, but you know, if you have that option, take time off, um, do things that aren't IT related, um, Go sit and in the I'm, woods for a, a couple of days. Yeah, I'm, I, I am. I am lucky with that flexibility for myself. That that especially like during the day, if it's if if my nine to one is extremely stressful, that I can I can take an hour. I can lay down. I can close my eyes for fifteen minutes. I can go out for a walk. You know, take the dog for a walk. Blah blah blah. Just get away for for an extended period of time, as long as nothing's going to blow up. And there's very few things that's going to happen to blow up for between an hour where you can't deal with it when you get back. Um, so yeah, it is, it is nice to have that flexibility. Um, a lot of it's just having hobbies, like, like Kyle said, having, having a hobby that's, that's not, and, and I, I, I get burned a lot too, but I think we all do, especially, especially now, especially with COVID, um, you know, we suddenly shifted from supporting one network to supporting 40 um for some customers because now it's now it's not just their their network at the office it's all everybody's home it's it's well i can't get my computer online well what's your wi-fi password well i don't know don't you know that why why would i know your your wi-fi password right. at home um well where do i find that call you know see you're gonna be on your modem call your cable company call your kid um well i don't have internet okay well can't help you there um <laughs> There's, I've had, there's plenty of those stories. Like, just, yeah. Well, you know, uh, but I need, I need to connect to my Wi-Fi network. Okay. Then connect to it. What, uh, 
I need you to help me. Like, I, I can't help you. It's your home Wi-Fi network. Yeah. I know nothing about your home Wi-Fi network. There might be text on your Wi-Fi router. What's yep. a router? <laughs> um, what, what is what is one technology or application that you are excited about? Um, IT Nation. Plug. I'm just kidding. VR. Um, I, I, I am VR and AR. I, I think... I think virtual reality and augmented reality are, are really exciting um, as long as they don't get overrun by advertising. Um, I think it'll be like, I, I'm really excited when like the, the technology goes as, as small as being able to go onto contacts, which may be maybe science future. That's probably a lot. That's probably quite a way. Yeah. The future. Way ways Shr shrinking the goggles, the the glasses that you wear to like normal glasses are probably yeah. the, the next major leap. Um, that because I'm mixed. That I mean, you opens up a plethora of things: virtual meetings, virtual um, being able to build. Like, let's say I'm an architect and I want to design a building. Yep. I can walk you through that entire building in VR, and mm -hmm. you know I can troubleshoot a network. I can look at the network infrastructure to see where there's a possible issue by walking the actual infrastructure in VR. There's a yeah. whole whole host of applications and stuff you can do. I think I think along along those lines with with AR and being able to you know you're going to the museum and you're going on tour and you just you don't you have you have your your paintings on the wall or you have your sculptures and you don't need you know labels on them you don't need something detracting from that because you can pull it up in your AR whether that's by glass or by contact or, or, you know, right now it's mostly through your phone, but, but that's, that's really cool. I like that idea. The Panthers um, did something recently with uh mixed reality AR. Um, they launched a giant Panther in their stadium. If you could quit it and do another job and support yourself family, what would you like to do? Hmm. I don't know. I, you know, I, I've always kind of wanted to like, this may be silly, but, but be like, have like a pub restaurant, like just your average run of the mill. Like, what would you call it? Connect wise. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. You, you gotta uh, have a, you gotta have a, a catchy name. Haven't, haven't, haven't put that much thought into it. Oh. Um, you know, probably probably had some names of, of things. I've got a I've got a bunch of domain names, so I'd probably just pick one of them. That's you, you <laughs> do have a lot of domain names. Whenever a good one strikes the fancy, you're like, oh, that's nice, and I'm just gonna go buy it. Yeah, but I didn't I didn't get spicy Maggie McGee. Yeah. Oh, spicy McGee, there's a name. Um, but that but you know happen. something. Go down to spicy McGee's. See something the uh you know. I, some, somewhere where you're it's it's laid back it's not high and you get to know people cheers you want know? you want to recreate cheers i want to <laughs> recreate i want to recreate cheers just with food as long as as, as long as i get a stool i'm cool hey well we yell kyle every time you walk in <laughs> whenever a kyle walks in <laughs> kyle <laughs> One of them, there'll be like a, a bar row of Kyles. It'll be like, okay, that's for Kyle, 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 Kyle. No, you just make a, a, a specific stool, a Kyle stool. And if a Kyle is occupying a Kyle stool, you can't complain. You got to sit yeah. somewhere else. That, that, that works. Drew's bruise. Hey, I mean, but yeah, that works. Alliteration is just isn't as, as fun as it used to be. That's rhyming. That's not alliteration. You could use the tech bar. That'll work. <laughs> Hey, I've, I've, I've got approval now. So there we go. It's the tech bar. Yep. Oh, no, it's like the tech bar. It's your fans. Yeah, no. I mean, you know, that's, that would be, that's kind of a dream that if I could do that and support my family, even if it was working a lot, you know, just being able to interact with people, at least when there's not a pandemic and just face to face and getting to know people and the space where, everybody knows bar. You, where, where everybody knows your name. The space but, bar is a good one. But it is. you gotta be careful with that because that could be like space or that could be like a keyboard. Yeah, I 
I think I think people would come in with the expectation that there's going to be astronauts. Yeah, that 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 wasn't my first thought, but it was my immediate second thought because I'm also into sci-fi. So, yeah, like it's it's going to be like they're they're going to expect forks and not just you just split it. Half of it's tech related, half of it's space related. Pick just your, one big pick like, your poison. One line down the center of the restaurant, half yeah. is one way and half is another. like completely different. Like you have like a bright modern aesthetic over on one side with glass and everything and then you have like a dark vibe over here with like everything's starry and yeah yep <laughs> wait which which side is the tech side and which side's the space side yes <laughs> that's for so, you to yeah you I, I, I think i think that would be my uh i think that would probably be my my um my go-to awesome what's my my stupid my what's a stupid human trick or what is my what is your stupid human trick? Um, I'm really good at pulling exactly the number of hangers I need for the shirts and my clean laundry out of my closet. That's a pretty good stupid. That's a, that's a fan. That's not a, I wouldn't call that a stupid. That's a miracle. Like, like I, I, I am really like, even when it's like a half load or something, I'm really good at just eyeing it and just grabbing a handful of hangers and then like, Oh, I need three more and being exactly right. It'll never happen again now that I admitted it to people. Yeah, of but course. that's, that's my one times. Yeah. Paid for it was time. nice while it lasted. Yeah, right. All right. I think we've taken up enough, enough of Drew's time for today. Um, that's more of a knack, not a stupid human trick. All right. Well, what do you what do you want, man? Give me no, give me an it's idea. Done. It's a stupid human trick. It's fantastic. He's done. You know what? Banned. I can do that. I can, I can do that. I can I can do that. I can do the crane kick. Oh, I can do the kink. I can do that crane kick. Just ask El Ambassadoro. Kicked him in the face. That seems that seems more like a karate move than a stupid human trick. Like a trained. At at 39 years old, if you can get your leg up that high, that's a trick. Um, we're, we're not gonna kick people in the face on stream. That is against the ter- terms of service. Well, wow. I'm not contributing to this delinquency. It's it's out there. It's on something. I think it's just on OneDrive right now. We'll recreate but... it on Twitch or on oh, I, no, it's... IT Nation. We're we'll recreating it's on, it. On, it was, it's on my episode of the Tech Bar. I was there. Yeah, I might go to IT Nation. I don't know. Uh, See, that's that's one of the things that's been great about all these virtual events because it is so easy to be able to attend a virtual event and still work. And actually taking like two or three days off to go to an event and sit through things has is is a lot fair. more time than, than however I have most times. I'll be there. Yeah, and IT Nation is just in Orlando. So it's not like I have to go anywhere. Like that's mm-hmm. solid. I, I drive there and drive back. So, so uh well, I mean, I, like I said earlier, we we we've we've been live for about an hour and a half. Um <laughs> this this has to be edited at some point. Although I would love to have a end of tech bar, tech bar, like tech bar does. So um, you know, Drew, I thank you for taking the time to um discuss all the fantasticness that we've discussed today um you know i know i appreciate it and the community appreciates it as well uh so you know thank you for i appreciate i appreciate you and i appreciate the community all right and on that note i'm hitting the end i'm trying to make it as creepy as possible that's right i mean you could i mean i usually do and on that note i'm hitting the end stream button